Welcome back everyone to another video. Now I have had my fair collection of development boards but never really ended up stacking uh, all of them against each other on a performance benchmark. So in this video we will be taking a look at two sets of benchmark. The first one being Octane 2 which is a JavaScript based performance benchmark for web browsers and the second one being a real world benchmark wherein I measure the total time a particular board takes to compile FFmpeg. So let's take a look at Octane 2 first and since this is a score based benchmark more is better. Starting from the best performance uh, we have the up board with a score of 6751. It's powered by a quad core Intel Atom X5 Z8350 CPU with a base clock of 1.4 GHz and a boost of 1.9. Following that we have the Jaguar board that comes in at 5349 powered by a quad core Intel Atom Z3735 CPU with a base clock of 1.3 and the boost of 1.8. Then we come into the ARM powered devices with the Nano PCT2 with a score of 3242 powered by a quad core Cortex A9 CPU clocked at 1.4 GHz. Falling behind is the Raspberry Pi 3 with a score of 2753 powered by a quad core Cortex A53 CPU clocked at 1.2 GHz. Following very closely we have the Kharas Vim with a score of 2699 uh, powered by a quad core Cortex A53 CPU clocked at 1.5 GHz. Then we have the Banana Pi M64 with a score of 2492 again powered by a Cortex A53 at 1.2 GHz. Then we have the Rose Apple Pi uh, which also happens to be the very first uh, board I kind of reviewed and this had a score of 2309 powered by a quad core Cortex A9 CPU at 1.1 GHz. Then we have the Raspberry Pi 2 1.2 which is basically a Raspberry Pi 3 with uh, less clock speed uh, with a score of 2186 powered by a quad core Cortex A53 CPU clocked at 900 MHz and finally we have the Raspberry Pi version 1.1 1 .1, uh, with a score of 1639 powered by a quad core Cortex A7 CPU at 900 MHz. So this brings us to the end of our Octane 2 benchmark with the up board taking the lead and the Raspberry Pi 2 being the slowest of the bunch. So now let's take a look at FFmpeg compilation benchmark. Again all the boards use the exact same configuration and since this is a time based benchmark uh, lower is better. Leading the benchmark we have obviously the up board uh, taking only 12 minutes to complete the process and following closely we have the Jaguar board at 16 minutes. On to the ARM based devices we have the Kras Vim taking 24 minutes to complete the compilation and following that we have a tie between the Raspberry Pi 3 and the uh, Banana Pi M64 both taking 27 minutes and that doesn't seem too far fetched as both of them have the exact same CPU architecture and clock speeds both of them being a Cortex A53 at 1.2 GHz. Then we have the Nano PCT2 at 30 minutes although it does have a higher clock speed at 1.4 GHz than the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Banana Pi M64. The benchmark seems to be preferring the much advanced Cortex A53 architecture over the Cortex A9 present in the Nano PCT2. Then we have the Raspberry Pi 2 version 1.2 at 36 minutes followed closely by Rose Apple Pi at 37 minutes and again the much better Cortex A53 is being preferred over the Cortex A9 with higher clock speeds. Then we have the Raspberry Pi 2 version 1.1 at 49 minutes and finally lagging behind is the single core a 1 GHz CPU uh, BeagleBone Black at 166 minutes. With that done let's have a full disclosure now. 
I don't own a beagle bone black as such but what I do have is a beagle bone green wireless by Seed Studio which is basically the same thing same processor same hardware it's just that it has wireless capability and lacks an HDMI port and that is also the reason I couldn't feature it in the Octane 2 benchmark as the lack of HDMI port meant I couldn't see uh, any display output. I also don't own a Raspberry Pi 2 version 1.2 which as I said uses the same CPU as, B as the Raspberry Pi 3 only at a very low clock speed of around 900 megahertz so i used an underclocked raspberry pi 3 instead which actually comes pretty close to the actual raspberry pi 2 version 1.2 and finally since on the ffmpeg compilation i use the exact same configuration across the board the x86 boards have to do some extra work due to the yasm uh, module assembler uh, being enabled by default for x86 platforms and with that said i hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one